Hi everyone and welcome to the Gems in Connection Instagram page. My name is Rumbi Munyaradzi and I'm the founder and digital mentor at the Gems in Connection. The big idea behind all of what we do is to make sure that young people like yourself have access to relevant and inspiring content that can help you make great decisions about the life that you're building. Not only do we talk about career insights, but we also talk about life skills and personal development because not only should you be successful, you should be happy with the life that you're building. So we thought we'd do a quick video like this one to introduce you to the team and help you get to know a little bit more about who we are and what our interests are as well. So I'm going to answer a few questions and hopefully you find this fun as well. My name is Nora Andre, I'm 19 and I'm a social media manager at Jensen. So my name is Tadiwa Nashi, I'm 19 years old and I'm currently a digital content creator at the Jensen Collection. Um, what three things on your bucket list? So this is pretty easy for me. I love to travel. I'd love to go to uh, South America, starting off uh, with the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, then having a like a highlight of the Amazon, and then ending off by visiting the Galapagos Islands. So that's one bucket list item. The second one is a bit of a nerdy one, and I'd love to do a PhD uh, in philosophy. I haven't yet figured out the subtopic, but I know that uh, as part of my continuous learning, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd expect to cap it off by, by doing further studies in that direction. And then the third thing is completely blue sky, and don't judge me, but uh, I'd, I'd, I'd also have on my list to, to meet Serena Williams. I know that everything that she has learned as a champion on and off the court will be relevant even if I make this happen five or ten years from now. So whenever, whenever it happens, I'll be more than excited to meet such a great champion. So for me, three things that are on my bucket list are to go skydiving, go camping with my friends and to start an orphanage. I won't have a bucket list, but definitely if I had one, I think the one thing I would put in there would be just to complete this year of university. Like, just that, just to complete this year of university and go on to the next one that the place is quite. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, what's the most embarrassing song you admit to liking publicly? Anyone who knows me knows that I love music. I listen to a huge range of content out there and I'm actually not embarrassed about anything that I that I listen to and, and sing along to. Uh, some of my music choices are a little bit corny. So something like Everywhere by Fleetwood Mac <laughs> might count as uh, something to be potentially embarrassed about. But like I said, I own it. Um, I probably blame ZBC for uh, playing the song on repeat when I was growing up. But yeah, Everywhere by Fleetwood Mac. You know that song by Phineas and Ferb. Um, and they sang it with your sister. It's called Bow Wow. That's what my baby says. Bow Wow Wow. And my heart starts pumping. Chicka Chicka Chew. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. So for me, it would have to be What Does the Fox Say by, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I think it's Yelvis, Y-L-V-I-S. So I think that's a banger. No matter what anyone says, that is a good song. And I have friends that will also agree that that's a good song. There's a reason why it has 8.3 million likes on YouTube. So check that out and let me know what you think of the song in the comment section. The next question goes, what always makes me laugh? Anything funny. Yeah, anything funny. For me, it would have to be funny memes, funny skits and puns. I always love doing puns with my friends. It's such a great time. You'll be just rolling around like, ah, you say this, you say this. So yeah, it's cool. So I like to laugh with people and not at people. And the comedians who do this pretty well are uh, folks like Trevor Noah or Yvonne Orji, uh, who come up with content that is super smart uh, and well thought out. And they're clean jokes, like you always have a good time listening to what they say. So it's not really about particular topics, it's just more about the style of the comedian. So those two stand out in particular. Um. What are three things you can't do without? God, my support system, 
um, and food. Food. So three things I can't do without besides God, my family and friends. The first thing would have to be my phone because I use that to communicate literally everything, documents, music, photos, everything is just on my phone. So without my phone, yeah, it would be difficult. Contacts, I don't know people's numbers by head. So birthdays, sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes I don't know them by head. So my phone is very essential for that. The second thing would be my pets. I love my cat and I love my dogs. They are like my world. So I can't do without them. And the third thing would be food, which is pretty obvious. A lot of people like food. I'm one of them. So yeah. For me, I don't actually have three things that I can't do without. I mean, of course, there's stuff like food, shelter, water, blah, blah, blah. But the only thing that really stands out is my cell phone. Not because of social media, but just because I can actually run most of my daily activities, all of my admin, my banking, everything from my phone. So yeah, I use my phone every day. That's like the one, that's like the one true constant. There are lots of things that are out there, but I, if I and I'm and I'm not and I'm not counting people by the way. But if there's one thing I couldn't do without, it would be my phone for sure. What's one thing you've done but your mom doesn't know? I I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. By pleading the fifth, Tadeo has declined to answer any questions that may incriminate her. This is one. <laughs> okay, so I can't admit to <laughs> to something for the first time by putting it online. But for real, uh, jokes aside, I, there's nothing major that I've done that my mom doesn't know. We're pretty close, so unfortunately, no no secrets to spill here. I haven't done anything bad, so there's nothing really to say. My mom knows quite a lot, but I would say I went to KFC with a friend after exams, a friend being a girl mom in case you're watching this she's a girl (laughs) so i went to kfc after an exam and yeah we just got i think it was dunk doings and she bought them so that was very nice shout out to her so she bought kfc and then we ate them and then we went back home so there was nothing too hectic and if my mom finds out about that which she will because she watched this she won't get mad so yeah okay the next one is, what's my biggest pet peeve when it comes to social media? The advice people be giving each other on social media. Stop it. Stop it. So, I think my biggest pet peeve would have to be the negativity that's on social media. Sometimes it gets way way out of hand like on videos you could have a video of someone cooking and someone say something that's completely offside and you're just there wondering you have you had no reason to even say that there's no reason that you can actually come up with to say oh this is why i said what i said so the negativity is something that i'm not a fan of so i actually don't use social media a lot i might be on twitter to read news or i might be on instagram but for gens and and my biggest peeve that I've noticed is just how nasty people can be online. And I'm pretty sure that some of the things that people say, they wouldn't have the guts to say in person, which always makes me wonder, you know, why not just be nice? Or if you don't have anything to say, just don't write anything. So the, the toxicity that, ha- that sometimes pops up online, I think is you know, pretty annoying. So that would be the one thing that I'd point out. What's the best advice you have ever received? Um, pray. Pray. Best. And it works and comes through all the time. So yeah, pray. Okay, so I think this is mainly for people that's that have like left high school so it's that we all go down different paths so 
You shouldn't spend your time trying to compare yourself to other people and then risk working on your own future. So it can apply to other people in high school, in university, after university, but you feel it so much more just after leaving high school because in high school, it's like you're all doing the same thing. You're running towards the same goal to pass, to do this, to do this, to win your games at school at sports and stuff like that and then after high school it's like everyone's doing whatever they're doing and you can end up comparing yourself to other people looking at other people and saying why am i not doing the same thing so <clears throat> it's important to focus on yourself and work towards your own future not other people's so yeah so here, it's not so much an, a piece of advice, but rather a quote that I have interpreted as advice. And loosely, it goes, every person or every man has two lives. And the second one begins when he realizes he has only one. And what this quote is trying to tell us is that we don't have as much time as we think we do. And once we realize just how precious and limited our time on earth is, we will start to move and function with a lot more intentionality, a lot more purpose, a lot more action, because you're not taking it for granted that you'll be here tomorrow. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Um, none of us can actually guarantee that we'll be here a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. So every opportunity that we have to just literally live our best lives and just be happy is so important it doesn't mean that you suppress your emotions but it does mean that you move on from any negativity uh, or, or any feeling of stuckness as soon as you can because there's a better you there's a better moment there's a happier moment waiting for you to access if you could move beyond that you know, immediate uh, a bit of negativity. So for me, having an appreciation for how limited time is helps me to appreciate that I need to get to that good part if I'm not already in it. And um, it's a very humbling thought as well to know that even when you're young and you feel like, you know, you've got your whole life ahead of you, uh, you just have to uh, find ways to recenter and, and remind yourself about uh, the importance of intentionality. So that's, that's my piece. <laughs> I hope you found this fun. If you did, like the video, share it as well. And if you have any suggestions for us on topics we should cover, please leave a comment below or send us a message in our DMs. We already do cover a lot of content on the website, on the YouTube channel, and of course, uh, everything else that we have on Instagram. But we're still here. We're still literally learning, growing, connecting, and sharing. So the most important thing is to make sure that the topics that we cover feel relevant to you and the things that, you, that you're going through. So yeah, come through and, and, and give us feedback on what you'd like us to talk about. And even if I don't have uh, direct insights on it, I can always find uh, guest speakers who can shed light on some of the things that are, that are bothering you or that you just like more exposure to. So yeah, guys, uh, this, was, this has been fun and looking forward to interacting with all of you more often as we go forward on this journey. Take care.